Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing some practical tips along the way. I'm Corey Nockreiner, your all-around security fanboy, and this is the episode for the week starting April 1st, 2013. Last week, we had a record-breaking DDoS attack, and this week, we have TDOS attacks, or telephony denial-of-service attacks. According to a document released by the Department of Homeland Security and the FBI, attackers have been targeting businesses and emergency phone systems with phone-based denial-of-service attacks. Here's how they work. First, the attacker calls the business or emergency phone line demanding payment of $5,000 for some sort of overdue loan that doesn't really exist. If that particular employee doesn't agree to pay, the denial of service attack starts, which is essentially the attacker calling the phone systems of the organization over and over again using spoofed numbers. Now, these sorts of denial of service attacks are not nearly as technical as the DDoS attack we saw last week. If you think about it, it doesn't really take many resources to overwhelm a telephone system. Uh, When you're attacking a network server like a web server, those servers are created to handle thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of connections. So it takes a ton of traffic to overwhelm those servers. But overwhelming a phone system only requires one call over and over again. So really, these attackers can get away with doing this uh, using very simple voice over IP automation where they create scripts to call a phone number, hang up, call again over and over. So again, not as technical as big DDoS attacks, but very damaging. It really doesn't take much for an attacker to overwhelm the phone lines of a business or emergency organization. And again, the attackers that are doing this aren't actually targeting 911, but they are targeting ambulance and air ambulance hotlines and financial businesses and stuff like that. So this type of attack can cause you a lot of strife. So what's your defense? According to the Department of Homeland Security's document, if you suffer from this kind of attack, they want you to contact them or the FBI to tell them about this attack. And you should record as many details about the attack as you can. The phone number it seems to come from, even though this is likely a spoofed phone number, the time periods you were attacked, how many uh, phones were affected, and so on and so forth. Anyways, this is an interesting development in denial of service attacks, though we have seen these sorts of phone-based attacks before. Seeing the government uh, warn about them suggests they've hit a pretty high threshold, so watch out for them. Next, let me share a few software updates, one just released and a couple upcoming. First of all, this week, PostgreSQL uh, released a big security update that fixes a vulnerability in their well-known database package. Basically, an unauthenticated attacker that has access to your database could leverage this flaw to cause a denial of service condition. If the attacker had a credential and could authenticate to your database, he could leverage this flaw to execute code. It was a pretty big deal in that one very publicly known cloud website actually received the patch before it came public. I will mention that some of WatchGuard's products use Postgres SQL, but you'll be happy to know that our implementation of Postgres is not vulnerable to either of these flaws. The second upcoming software update is Microsoft's patches. Thursday, Microsoft uh, disclosed the information about next week's Patch Tuesday. They plan on releasing nine security bulletins to fix flaws in Windows, Internet Explorer, Office, and some of their server software. And two of those updates are critical, so you want to get those two quite quickly. Some experts suspect that Microsoft's Internet Explorer update will fix some of the pwn to own vulnerabilities that were shown at the recent uh, security conference up in Canada. So again, if you use Internet Explorer, be sure to get those patches. While I won't spend much time describing it, do know the headless hacktivist collective Anonymous has launched a new attack project called Operation Free Korea, where they started attacking some of the web resources uh, for North Korea. According to the latest news, they were able to take over one of North Korea's Twitter accounts, their Flickr page, and one of their propaganda websites. And they were actually able to steal 15,000 user credentials from this particular propaganda website. 
On top of that, other gray hat hackers that aren't always associated with Anonymous, such as the Jester, have been doing their own attacks against North Korea, including denial of service attacks. So just know Anonymous seems to be targeting North Korea right now. We'll see what comes of it. Since I'm a gamer, I want to mention quickly a game-related hack. You might have heard of the game called War Z, this infamous game released on Steam and really had a lot of problems with its release. There was a lot of stories about its misadvertisement and, and a bunch of gamers really were against this particular game. Nonetheless, after fixing it, the, the makers of a War Z released the game on Steam again and it's been up there for a while. However, this week, the War Z makers warned that their game servers had been hacked and that attackers have stolen over 600,000 and credentials for what they call survivors, people that play the game. Now these credentials include a username and email address and also a hashed password. They haven't said how the password was hashed, but it is at least hashed, so it's somewhat protected. Nonetheless, if you play WarZ, you should definitely change your WarZ password. And if you use the same password on other websites, you should change it on those other sites as well and avoid using the same password everywhere. So let me end with a story about Dark Leech, which is an attack campaign that's hijacking thousands and thousands of Apache web servers. According to Ars Technica, mysterious attackers have launched a long-term attack campaign against Apache web servers. No one quite knows how they're compromising these servers, but once they do, they seem to install a SSHD backdoor, and they use that backdoor to install some malicious Apache modules. These Apache modules connect your uh, victim website to some of their malicious websites and inject some very hard to find code into your website that redirects your visitors to some malicious drive-by download or clickjacking sites. Now this particular dark leech campaign and its modules are quite advanced. It does some very uh, intricate things to avoid detection. For instance, rather than putting these invisible iframes right within your web code, it injects them on demand so that you you won't find them in your web code. It's only when people visit your site that they'll show up. On top of that, the attackers have created some interesting evasion techniques. If this malicious code detects that one of your web visitors is actually a security company or some other site that's designed to find malware, they will actually avoid their malicious scripts from loading. So it makes it much harder for security researchers and companies to detect these evil sites and blacklist them. They also do things like making sure search engines can't search and find this code so that things like Google Safe Search can actually find this malware. In either case, it's very, very insidious. Again, no one really knows how attackers are compromising these Apache sites, so it's hard to give you advice on how to protect yourself. But at the very least, if you run any sort of Apache server, whether in-house or hosted, I recommend you visit it from some outside connection while running a packet sniffer and just pay attention to some of the other URLs your site may connect to. That's it for this week's quick episode. I will mention there were a number of other security stories this week as well, so if you're interested, check the reference section of our WatchGuard Security Center post associated with this video. You should also check out WatchGuard Security Center regularly for other security posts. For instance, yesterday we released this month's Radio Free Security podcast, which has a lot of interesting stories, so check it out or listen to it on iTunes. On top of that, feel free to follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept, or you can follow WatchGuard at WatchGuard Tech. Thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.